Just a couple bad weather fans representing New York. Talking all things sports. Man, what could go wrong? We got Alex, who's a fan of the Knicks. And Mike of the Nets. The yin-yang of the tri-state. Place your bets on the Yankees, Giants, Mets, or Jets. Yeah, you should listen if this sparking your interest. If you made a vow to your team, don't break it. Bad weather fans is the relation. relation, relation. That's right. This is Bad Weather Fans. Episode number 225. Mike Viseglia, Alex Benesiewicz, and the New York Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets make a blockbuster trade, which we will dive all into. This is Bad Weather Fans. You can find this on YouTube if you want to see the video version. And of course, listen on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you're getting your podcast and subscribe. And late last night, the Brooklyn Nets and Knicks made a shocker of a trade. First time since 1983, the Nets and Knicks make a deal. And the Brooklyn Nets exchange Mikel Bridges to New York. Basically, for the Knicks' future, getting um, unprotected draft picks, four of their own, up to 2031. They also get the Milwaukee Bucks' first-round pick, which is top protected of the top four. And then they get a pick swap with the Knicks in 2028. Boyan Bogdanovich comes in the deal. But all said and done, six first-round draft picks coming to the Nets from the Knicks. And the Knicks get Mikel Bridges, who joins his best friends in New York, the Villanova Quad as they can enjoy their frat party in New York. Alex, good morning. How are you doing? I am doing amazing. Definitely a lot better than you. But, I, you know, you got a lot of picks. But holy crap, I can't believe that this happened. Something we thought would never happen. Something we talked about with Jake Fisher. He said the only way that this would happen is if Jalen Brunson said, I want Mikael Bridges. So maybe that actually happens. Uh, when Jake Fisher, Fisher was on the show and he said that. So maybe that's what happened. Yeah, exactly. So Jalen Brunson runs a franchise, as we knew. And also quickly, I want to shout out Triple M because on Twitter and via text and, you know, all, everywhere we talk to him, he's been on the show with us. He has Knicks fans wild and he called it from the start. And he said the Knicks and Nets would make this podcast and would make this podcast would make this trade. And they did. So shout out to him. But uh, I, I'm in shock. I can't yeah. believe it. I, I, I just like go ahead, Mike. You you go. I'm just I'm out of words. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I am. I am. Uh, I've got a lot of them and I'm excited to say them. Two parts. <laughs> One, if you caught me last night when the trade happened, I was extremely pissed off um, and right. I'm still pretty angry about the whole thing um, for a lot of different reasons for uh, stemming from uh, w- S- helping the Knicks out ultimately pissed me off. Um, yes. And triple M was right. Um, I was clearly wrong. Um, no problem saying that given my opinion, it didn't, you know, it, it first time in 41 years, they made a trade and this, this happened to be the incident. Um, triple M called it. I was incorrect on that. Me too. I will, you know, I, it's, <laughs> it's, it's interesting because at first I was just beyond pissed off and I don't think it mattered what went back in that deal, but for the nets. And I, I've been saying this on this podcast for months maybe year they needed to pick they needed to pick a direction and what the nets did after that Knicks trade is they went back to houston and first of all they they leveraged houston and utah so they got six picks from the knicks which is a lot of first round picks and they then went back to houston and they pick swapped where they originally were so the nets have their picks essentially back and we can get into the full hole but the nets have a direction that they have right they now have all these knicks picks and they have their own picks back from houston so they can they can give a direction where if they're bad it's their own picks and they can develop young players and they've got a bajillion draft picks if it's coming from philly if it's coming from new york if it's coming from phoenix if it's coming from dallas they've got 15 number one draft picks that's number one picks up to 2031 so they've set themselves up to be in a position where it, they, I don't know if they'll win a championship. Probably not. A lot of it has to do with the how bad the Knicks can be down the road. But at least they have a direction now, right? They have their own picks and they have all of New York's. Um, so I feel good about that. Where I'm pissed is it just sucks that the Nets have to give Mikel Bridges to the Knicks um, and help them on their championship quest. Um, I have a lot of opinions on how it fits in New York. I have a lot of opinions on that, and I'm you know I'm ready for the the onslaught of how just incredible of a moment this is for the Knicks and their fans. But I would just remind everybody that he's got to fit in there, he's got to play, and he's got to do more than just what's said on paper and things that have to unfold. Uh, but for the Knicks right now, I mean, they're clearly the team to, they're clearly the team that has the best chance to beat Boston by adding Mikel Bridges. There's no doubt about that. The team's in the, in the, in, in the spot where they're going for a championship, and this was the all-in trade, right? They wouldn't do it for Donovan Mitchell. They wouldn't do it for other guys. They got all in 
on Mikel Bridges at 27 years old, um, who they they out they 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 definitely overspent to get him, but with the idea of bringing him into their culture and to their Villanova trio to make it four now that they can get the most out of him, which you know I I do think they will. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens on that front, but yeah, they, they definitely overspent. Um, and it's, and it's a trade that probably benefits both teams. Uh, it just sucks that it's the Knicks. I mean, it sucks. And it, and, and that part of it is, is will always sting me. Um, and we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. I mean, and the Knicks and the Nets are now enmeshed in each other for the next decade with, uh, the Nets are going to be rooting against the Knicks, not just from a jealousy or a local fan rivalry, uh, rivalry. It's going to be legit. Like there's a reason to root against the Knicks. If you're a Nets fan now, sure, because you own their picks, you know what, but, but just take it easy a little bit for Nets fans, the positive spin champions, of course, where it's like, we got all these picks, these Knicks picks, but the Knicks, this is not Isaiah Thomas trading picks to try to become relevant and then hoping that they picks. We won't need those picks down the road. We'll be good by then. The Knicks are good now. And they added right. a guy that they already know how to play with. <laughs> you know what I'm sure. saying? And I, I, I'm as I'm saying this, I feel like I'm, I'm doing the Kemba thing when they got Kemba, like they just added him and, you know, whatever. But so, uh, you know, I want to pause myself there, but like, the the Knicks, honestly, I, I believe this. They could have won the championship this year if they were healthy, like legitimately healthy. We forget about Julius Randle also. I know I make fun of him and he hasn't been good in the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. But the way they played in January and now they add Mikel Bridges, who they know how to play with already. They're all friends. They're all meshed together in uh, second to mesh drop, by the way, all meshed together in uh, business wise and friendship. And they all play together. They probably hang out in the offseason, same agencies. Everything. It is all perfect and right there for the Knicks and for the Nets and Nets fans to pause in this like, well, that 2031 pick is going to be great. Well, guess yeah. what? That kid is now 11 years old. Well, so, he, I mean, like I just you don't know what that draft's going to be like. It could be a draft like course. this year. It could be a Wemby draft. You don't know. So I'm but not worried about that right now. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't <laughs> yeah. be worried about that. And But I think it's an overall direction for the Nets. It's bigger than right. just, well, what will the right. Nick draft pick look like? in the 2031 they got because they can trade that they can still trade that yeah they have four picks in 2025 which is a loaded draft pick they're not going to draft four guys but let's say they're the eighth pick the 12th they can package things and maneuver to move they have flexibility and leverage now and yes you're right the knicks are good now but this is what happens with all of these trades and it could be a bust but you think when the nets got james harden they had Kyrie, james harden and then they had um, kevin durant and it was like well they won't be bad well then they got bad they made the deal with Boston and they and they added Paul Pierce and uh, Kevin Garnett. Like, well, they won't be bad. They're t- then they got bad. So you don't know what the Knicks are going to look like. In of course, 2027, not. No. 2029 and 2031. And the fact that they went and made the next trade to get their assets back from Houston and swap that around is what sold it for me is at least there is a potential in a future here now. So, yes, the Knicks are going to be obviously next year. If the Knicks aren't somewhere in the late 20s of a draft pick, it was an extreme failure as the Knicks are a title team adding a three and D player like Mikel Bridges into the system, which clearly works with Villanova players in that friendship, of course it does. I would be shocked if he doesn't come in there and doesn't it doesn't play well. Like Mikel's not a number one. We saw he's not a number two. But if you bring him in where he can just slide into part of this championship DNA that the Knicks have now, it makes sense. So I'm not I I I think for the Knicks they overspent, but I get why they did it. They're all in on the title. And for him there is the perfect fit because of the Villanova connection. If right. Utah did this trade or if Houston if they've If they gave up six picks, you'd be like, what are you doing? But because of where the Knicks are, I totally get it. And it's championship or bust now for this franchise. Completely. It was already. It was already, honestly. Complete. Well, now that you've given and they got to sign up, they got to sign Ananobi. Well, that's the next disaster. Or it's a or if they don't sign Ananobi and they went all in on this Mikel thing, I think it's a disaster of a trade from that front. If you don't get an Ananobi back and can fill in that spot because they they have to. They, they, they can't give up that many assets in R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel quickly in every draft pick they have and not get a return there. For just Mikel get Mikel Bridges. Bridges. That would just be ridiculous. Bridges, so they yeah. have to, they have to make that signing. But yeah, the and Hartenstein and Hartenstein. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they yeah. can, I don't know if they can. That's do that the cap. Now. Yeah. All, all, all well, all reports, that's sorry. the thing now. Maybe the rumors of Jalen Brunson opting in and extending early was because. He wanted Mikael Bridges, not OG Ananobi. Maybe that's the reason why that rumor got out there because, you know, we all thought, well, oh, because he's doing this because they're going to get OG Ananobi on, you know, they're going to pay OG Ananobi. They're going to keep Hartenstein. They're going to run it back. They're going to, Randall's going to have to stay for another year. He has to prove he's healthy. Obviously, they can't extend him yet. And that makes sense. 
But maybe that was because they were getting Mikael Bridges and dropping that contract into the mix, which isn't even that bad right now. No, it's a good contract. Uh, yeah, want so, more money in two years, of course. But it. fuck, in two years, let's see what happens then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we got two years to to let it rock. And Brunson knows, like he's not Jeremy Lin. He knows that you can make more money by just being a champion or just being a legit Patrick Ewing in this city than you can on the extra money on the short term on the contracts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at Jalen mm-hmm. Brunson right now. He's on interviews he's getting endorsements he's he's growing so much just off of one real gr- amazing year i know the absolutely. year before was great too but last year is when he really took absolutely. off <laughs> so absolutely so honestly like i think they know that they're going to keep og and Obi, but this also helps them in leverage with him they're like you know they can be like quote unquote we don't need you we got mikhail bridges even though they do we know what's the lineup look like i don't know the also the next few moves is going to shape this roster. They ha- yeah, and Mitchell done. Robinson being on the roommates podcast this week clinched it for me knowing, okay, Mitch is coming back because Josh Hart and Brunson run the franchise. They know what's coming and what's not coming. They wouldn't have put Mitchell Robinson on the podcast this week, the week of the draft, if they thought he was going. So he's staying. He's their starting center. Hartenstein, what's happening yeah. with him? I don't know. But He's always been the X factor. OJ and Obi has to come back, but then you look at it like, what's the lineup? And you can't even play that game yet because we don't know what the other trades sure. are. They could do a sign and trade with Hartenstein and get pieces that mix and and who knows. But you got to play. It's 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 just no, they amazing have a to think, dude. Like I, I can't I can't believe it. I have to look back at those old Villanova teams and see what their lineups were because they had Brunson, Dante, Mikel. <laughs> like you know what I mean? They didn't have yeah. OG. But, you know, maybe they bring back R.C. Adano, too, man. They probably will. I want to make throw it, the towel around on the, on the end of the bench, you know. I want to make so. it very clear because there's no there's no idea like this thought that, oh, the Nick picks oh, that it's about the restructuring of the franchise. And right. They did that. And all of these trades it, to get better. I mean, the net. I mean, look at it from this standpoint, Alex, from a net perspective, the Nets traded away a um, very good player for six draft picks. I mean, that's unheard of. I mean, it just is like zero time all star, right? Zero, like I it. mean, I'm not, and I'm. This is not diminishing, um, wh- how I think it. No, fits I hear in New York you. Because it, but, but from a pure trade standpoint, that I mean, they got a, they got a haul back for the value of what he was with a team that was going nowhere. Um, but I, I can't stress that enough. So I get it. It, it, it. But the fact that I have to just sit there, in the moment, I'm like fucking watching Mets Yankees on my phone, um, in bed. And I get, you know, I'll get I get Woj and Shams alerts because, you know, this this is the time of year I turn the alerts on. And as the as the ball, the goddamn ball is going as Aaron Judge, hits a grand slam and it, I literally goes over. It's going over the fence. That tweet popped on my phone and I was like, I, I you I, had to stop I, your whole brain stopped. It shut I off. was so <laughs> invested in that baseball game. I can't tell you how like into that baseball game I was. I, I, basically watching it's Mets every, Yankee Subway Series. Uh, yeah, of course. Like, watching every pitch minus when I you know, put my daughter to bed. But like, I, I just can't. That came in and my mind was just like, did I read that? Like, did I? It, I I've never been in the moment of a sporting game and then seeing something pop up. Like there was 10 seconds of my brain just shut down and did not understand what it was reading. It did not understand. And and now I, I I'm, you I know, get it. Like you, th- you thought I wasn't rooting for rooting against the Knicks in the past. I mean, <laughs> that's that what I'm saying. Up, you know, yeah. um, that's why this podcast is going to be even crazier because yeah, you're going to have a, this year is going to be a total tank year, but maybe next year is not. And you like kind of go back up. So like you went, we always talk about going up the mountain. You're we're the Knicks are going up the mountain. The Knicks are now at the top of the mountain. They got to ready. Win. They got away. The Nets went right back down to the bottom. But so the Nets are trying to structure go, going up the mountain. Right, right. They have structure. They have an idea. But you know what? Like everybody's going to people who don't pay attention to the Knicks and Nets like we do are going to look at the price and be like, that's crazy. That what they paid that for Mikhail Bridges, you know, the national guys like I'm already seeing that on Twitter. And it just shows like you guys don't know what's going on. First of all, it's a Knicks tax. Knicks in, it's a New York City tax. Uh, we be. have a lot of taxes here. <laughs> Has and, to be. And has when to be. you're trading, exactly. There's no way the Nets were just going to hand Mikel Bridges to the Knicks for what he's quote unquote worth for like two first round picks and maybe to protect it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no way. And Bogdanovich, imagine that's the trade. You would fucking flip. But you know what? It's like the Knicks right now, they're worth $6.1 billion as per Forbes, right? If the Knicks went on the market for sale, they wouldn't go for $6.1 but They'd go for $10 billion because they're in the middle of Manhattan and they're going to keep growing in price. So what you're worth is not always what 
you go for. Like, look at the housing market right now for people to make it real for you. It's supply and demand. That's all it is. What's on the market, what, what a house is on the market for is going to go over for about two, three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just the way it is right now. And that's what it is with Mikhail Bridges and the Knicks. It's a tax. And but you know what? Both sides can be happy. I know the Nets fans, I, I feel like they're a little more depressed than you are right now. You're you're yeah. you're like, all right, you know what? We got all these picks. We're good. We're good. But but no. opening day, opening day, and you see or preseason when you see Mikel Bridges in that Nick uniform and the That's Knicks right. are zipping it around, you're gonna be like, oh fuck. Well, well, Alex, I will say that mo the majority of Net fans I have interacted with are thrilled with the trade. Are very happy. I think that's. But, but, but I think it's coping. I think it's coping. No, it's not coping. Positive not, spin champions. I, no, 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 I think no, no, it is. no, no. I think it is. It is not because this okay. team was was directionless. We'll uh, they, I'm telling you, the people that I interact with here, there are some. I'm 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 telling you, are happy that they have the, the amount of anger and disdain and hate that I have for the Knicks and wanting them to fail is not in all of Net fans. It is not. It, it isn't. And some of them see it as well. Yeah, we're gonna we get. We have a direction now to win. And if it's so be it means that the Knicks win a title or whatever. You uh, say that, that now earlier. You say that now. I don't believe it. I think it's BS. I think you guys are just trying no, to go to sleep I, at night. No, I think no, I, no, no, see, no. that's I, that's where we're going to disagree. I will 100 percent disagree with that. There are there are net, net fans are thrilled that they have a direction and don't care that it was the Knicks. I mean, you could play this angle. There's all these the reports about the Knicks giving all these picks for Paul George or giving picks for Embiid or Giannis down the line. Like that's the hull they traded. They traded that amount, right? But they right. got bridges. The they didn't do it for Donovan be, Mitchell. They didn't do it for Donovan Mitchell. They no, did it they for did. Bridges. They did it, and and the timing yeah. though was there. Um, and I will defend the net base that feels that way. I obviously am not as all in on that because I'm distraught and angered over the idea of him. You know, I, I have to net, now. I have to at this point, you know, um, compartmentalize and understand that this is what they have. This is where they're going forward, and maybe that was Triple M's foresight on me now than it was in the moment. But the trade is over. Um. So I have to see the direction of the Nets. And, and then for them, now it's, all right, Cam Johnson's under contract. There's no point to have him here. Trade him. Let's try to get into this year's draft and build and build younger players to come in. I mean, there's no point in having some of the aging veterans. You have to have some guys, obviously, but Boyan Bogdanovich, uh, flip him, get another asset in. What's What does it matter? Send him to a contender that needs somebody off the bench to score like the Knicks last year. So continue to make moves. And Sean Marks has reverted back to his original self that helped rebuild the franchise. They, they It sucks so much that I'm going to have to see Mikel Bridges. I, like to me, here was the perfect season. And I say this tongue in cheek because obviously you're going to root for them to win. But the Nets go four and 78. And all four wins are against the Knicks. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, I, I hear you and I hear you. And like, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to repeat myself, which I'm sorry that I'm doing it again. But you're saying that now. But once they line up in preseason and they're zipping it around and they're dominating and then in the regular season, they start off and they start off nine and two. You're going to be like, oh, my God, oh, what the hell did we just do? Of course. And we're in the playoffs and the Knicks are in the Eastern Conference Finals. So you're going to be like, oh, my God, what did right. we just do? I don't disagree with any of that, Alex. I don't. I'm just telling you for 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 a majority of the fan base they feel good about that um i'm just saying right now oh, right now yeah oh, it's and I, and, yeah, and, 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 yeah. You know, good riddance. but we also are not we good, still have a lot of off seasons good, good, right good no riddance. i know what you're gonna say go ahead good go riddance ahead. Yeah, to yeah, Mikel yeah. bridges he didn't right. want to be here right. from the beginning and yeah we'll go it was there clear it was clear when he said it in his um, on the roommates on, podcast <laughs> on 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 the uh you know the roommates podcast which now they're gonna have to get a third fucking microphone so he can come in <laughs> and give his perspective on what it was like in the villanova dorms and the villanova you know uh, the student center they gotta can't bring ryan to, back though they gotta bring ryan can't back. wait yeah. can't wait to hear about that <laughs> um it was clear he didn't want to be here and i don't mm -hmm. think mikhail bridges forced his way out in a trade i don't believe that i believe what jake fisher said in his report yesterday was the nets finally started to click in their head that it was time to make a trade. Utah and Houston were used as leverage for what they got from the Knicks, which was clearly a lot more than whatever those offers were. We'll hear about them as they come in. And let me tell right. you, if they're anywhere remotely close to the Knicks one, I will I will flip. I will completely flip. There's no way. Anywhere There's no way. Close. Danny Ainge anywhere, was, was offering that. There's no way. If, if it's anywhere, uh, th then I will lose my, my mind. There's no way. I will There's lose no my mind. Right, because if, if it's in Utah, who gives a damn? That. Forget you. We don't care. Goodbye. And what you're saying about, like, it, it's Mikael Bridges. Like, if this was, like, 
I don't want to say Jason Kidd, but let let name a net that you would that you like that wasn't a top player, like just like a mid, like Richard Jefferson. If this is Richard Jefferson and you traded him to the Knicks for all you know for all these picks, you'd be pissed. But if it was, but because it's Mikael Bridges, you're like fuck you anyway. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> you know I mean, what I mean. You don't want to be here, you know. So it's just like yeah. In similar trajectory of careers, if you look at Mikael yeah. and Richard, both guys that have not been all stars, both Got guys to the finals, like third wheels, very, very, very good players. Oh, I did good then, huh? I did good, good one. Yeah, <laughs> that was a, it's, a, it's a good comp. Um, good. Thanks. That, you know, I would say RJ. I'll take the pat better. on the back. I, I would, I would put RJ ahead of Mikel based on their careers, but Mikel's only twenty seven so far and still so far. going. So I'm, yeah. I'm saying like full totality of it. Um, I would put Richard Jefferson's career ahead of the where, but again, Mikel is we'll is, see. Is, is, yeah. is still growing. Um. But yeah, it was like good riddance after all of that and everything. Um, enjoy being with them, have fun, and you know my dream now is that they they're all in there and let those little fractures start to begin within that locker room. OG Ananobi, oh, you don't think I'm good enough? Now you got to bring somebody else in. Do I like? I'm not. I'm. I am rooting for it, like complete transparency. Rooting for that locker room to just ha- somehow fracture because it is all of the Villanova guys. And if somehow that could happen, that would be fantastic. Um, and yeah, I, yeah, that's that's a pipe. Let's dream. go. Them, I, like, I they might is, not but win I'm for it. They might not win, but like all of their friends together, like they've already done this and now they're adults. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, can we can we re- reset, though? I think, you know, the way we started this podcast, you know, 224, 25 episodes 25. ago was during COVID. And right before that was when Kevin Durant chose the Nets for whatever reason, you know, maybe because he got hurt and Kyrie wanted to go there. Maybe it's because, you know, he liked the Nets more than the Knicks. Uh, maybe he was scared of the spot. Like, who cares? We can debate that forever. We, nobody has the right answer besides Kevin, right? That was supposed to be the line where the Nets took over and became perennial title contenders. Exactly. Perennial title contenders. Nothing else there. It actually was the line of demarcation where the Knicks went from being let's piece it together and hope we can get to the playoffs to becoming the legitimate team that they are today. And it is crazy to think about. I know I said it at the time. This was a great moment in in, in Knicks history that he chose the Nets. I literally tweeted that out at Knicks Central. Mm. And I was saying that because he was hurt. But I wanted Kyrie. So I'm a little like halfway there, right? I don't want to pat myself on the back too much. But like Mikel Bridges went to Phoenix because of Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That was the trade because Kevin Durant wanted out of Brooklyn for whatever reason. I mean, uh, it's just so, crazy how life works like that. And I will I will use that comment to I know defend that. Yeah. So yeah. don't tell me that net fans now who said they like the trade are right. coping when you're going to say you said that when people accused you of different hope. situation, completely different situation. Oh, so it's a Granny Smith to it's apples to different apples. situation situation but it's, because like but, the knicks are already legitimate and they're all younger oh, but, they're but, not yeah, like but, piecing together a bunch of mercenaries true, but you know what i'm saying fan, like but the net fan never played on, together the net fan wouldn't come on here and say that they didn't make the knicks a title contender they will say that yeah what they're saying is they've given their franchise a, a chance they have and that is true i can't they have it's it, like i said it blows it sucks it's terrible that now it is the actual, well, maybe not final piece in New York because they're going to make some other trades or some other moves. The roster's not yeah. fine. It, it's no, got, it's no. got to be maneuvered. Both teams' rosters aren't final. Oh, no. But no, what's with the trade? What was the Trey Young rumors with the Nets? Were they just checking in on Trey Young and then they were like, nah? Then they checked in on, you know, whoever else and they're like, nah. And well, you know what? This Knicks deal is too good. We got to just do it and forget it. Let's blow I think this there thing was up. some some speculation and still is about Trey being on the move with Atlanta getting the number one draft pick. Um, but I think I think what Sean Marks recognized was it was time to start it over. And I don't know if with new ownership, partially new ownership, that had an impact on it. I don't know. But at least they were like, we have to start this over. But again, it just sucks that I'm going to have to sit here and watch Mikel and the whole thing. It's it's going to be um, it's going to be brutal. I mean, it's you know going to be brutal. Shout out to you because you saw that roommates podcast with Mikel Bridges and you put out a video online on Twitter at Mike Delivers Pod selfie video and you were first you were texting me you're like what the this motherfucker like i hate him like what is wrong with him like bothered like this me guy he's getting his he's getting teased by the by by these two nick players and like he's he's shitting on us on the nets fans take get our back and it went viral like super viral you know what i mean and now you're here today and you're like i knew this motherfucker was out the door <laughs> like, yeah, i mean it was you, know I mean? you so shout just, out to you you called it you saw it yeah you I mean, saw he, the, wa- 
and 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 yeah. people thank you and people were right the power of friendship i mean the power yeah. of friendship made a difference and that's how lebron wade and bosch the got together that's yeah. how they got together <laughs> yeah i mean you yeah. could ar- you could argue that this trio yeah. of hart mckell and brunson are better than those three <laughs> with lebron wade and bosch i'm waiting for that to come i'm waiting for that explanation to hit my you know hit well you know what the the amazing thing is mike the knicks still have their two first round picks this year yeah which know, is amazing and you know they can also um, guarantee two guys at the end of the bench, uh, whatever whoever they are. You know what I'm saying? And uh, out of whichever two they pick, and they can make it a sign and trade with Hartenstein or with Mikel Bridges. And like maybe it, the, I don't know why the Nets would do this and help the Knicks even more, where they can get under the cap even more and not get to that second tier. And you know what I mean? So I, I don't know what's going to happen here. So we still have another week. We got the draft coming up. Is it tonight or tomorrow? The Drafts draft tonight and then the second tonight. round's wow. tomorrow. So hopefully when people yeah. are listening to this, and I usually don't say stuff like this, but I hope this podcast is dated. I hope the <laughs> Nets make more moves. I hope we're not sitting here going, why didn't they trade? Well, Cam we're Johnson? reacting to McElroy. Why is Dorian yeah. Finney-Smith still on the roster? Like, they better be active in making more trades. Um, you know, People, I, Alex, I, you were talking about the, the video I had. You know, I did another video on March 27th. Oh, yeah, yeah where I said it's never going to happen. Um, and it, the onslaught of people um, that found that video, one, I was just like, wow, I can't believe people remember that. I guess I had an impact. Old Takes Exposed. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. but, here, but let, <laughs> let me tell you about Old Takes Exposed. I DM them the fucking video. Now, I don't know. Oh, if other see, people I was trying that. to get your back. I don't care. Like, hey, no, they I don't, saw no, it. I'm that big. You know, no, <laughs> I don't care. I want to do what's, what's smart for us in this brand and making sense for this podcast. Like, it's not like I went, like, old take to expose. You got a little shameless. That's good. Who Sometimes cares? you have to be a little shameless. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it's back. It's not about being it. right. Exactly. I don't know if other people did it, but it's like, who gives a fuck? It's Listen, me someone, on someone on, on the radio and TV is beefing with Grimace. So, like, we'll put it that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, well, that, making I up mean, a fake I, beef I, with I, Grimace. Yeah. yeah I'm, so, I'm already in an agitated mood. And, and so I won't don't go bring down that up. Yes. Don't okay. bring that up. The Mets are playing great baseball. So I have, I'm really excited. You know, it's been really fun to watch. Uh-huh. Um, is there one game under 500? They they beat the game. I didn't watch the ninth inning of the game. I couldn't I, do it. Dude, I couldn't I, it's do it. It's just unbelievable. Just you, you, you caught me. I was like finally relaxed and I was sitting down with my wife and we we're watching TV. I, I wasn't watching the Met Yankee game. I, I was like, you know, personally, my son had a little procedure this week. So I've been, a, you know, all, all over the place and finally got him to bed. We're relaxing. I have a bowl of popcorn. I'm watching a movie with my wife. And then I look at my phone and I see the text from you. And I'm like, holy shit, come on, man. This couldn't happen like crazy. an hour ago. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, so it's just, crazy. Like, you know, uh, it was it was insane. Uh, and I, I it was just holy shit. And that's what I tweeted. That's all all I can think of. There are people like, what do you think? I'm like, just holy shit. <laughs> I, I had a dream story. about Buddha last night. I don't remember the details. Mike Budalicious. Mike Budalicious. I don't remember the details, <laughs> yeah. but I know how badly, you know, I know he likes Villanova. And I know one of our big friends and Mikkel. one of our friends and fans. I wouldn't show. say yes. friend, but um, I know how badly he wanted Mikel on them. And I just, <laughs> he's a big Villanova fan and he's a diehard Nick fan. Just, so this is the, the this is exactly. like, this is heaven for him. Yeah. <laughs> like it really um, is. So uh, shout I, just out to ha- him. I have to somehow in my brain just separate the two that the Nets, it, the Nets now have a future and that and and, and those. It's easy now uh, until you see it until you no, see that Nick team brutal. on the court. It's good. It's, it's easy now. And it's going to be brutal. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be brutal. But um, the, the secondary trade where the Nets got their picks, they have back into the 2025 draft with their own pick um, was was an underrated big one, because if they tank this year. That they that you, there's no guarantee. Alex, like I said right. it's like they're back to just being. They're like the thunder of normal years team. Ago. Yeah, they have all these draft picks and they the Celtics. Stay. But there's from years ch- ago. Yeah. There's at least a chance that I can see a championship. That there was no. It was impossible. With it was mid for life. As, you were in mid for life. You were in purgatory. But they weren't even yeah. mid. They were. Yeah. They were. They were a they step were below it. Yeah. At least mid. It's like all right. We're gonna lose to the Celtics in five. This was right. We're win some games. Right, right. This was like you're not even in the play in tournament, but you're not the worst team. It's like the worst place to be ever. <laughs> People, um, I tweeted that Mikel will go down as the most disliked net ever. I mean, obviously, I uh, was in the moment. Tongue in cheek. I, I, can't, yeah. I can't think of But I will say for me personally, I have less respect for him than I do for Kyrie, Durant, and Harden. I. It's because it's the Knicks, and it's because at least when they were here, and trust me, they 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 forced their way out of here. So yes, it's yeah. it's 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 not like um they were you know these great guys for the franchise in in a lot of different ways, mm-hmm. but they always said fuck the Knicks, 
and and had fun with it. Mikel yeah. clearly was jealous and had serious FOMO of what was of going friends. on yeah. in Manhattan. And now he got his wish. So good luck. Yeah. I mean, think about it. I mean, if you're him, you know, and, and it's not even a shot at the Nets. It's like the Nets aren't good and you're playing in Barclays and the Knicks play you and it's mm-hmm. all Nick fans. And then you look on TV and the Knicks the fans are partying in the streets. The garden's blowing up. Josh Hart's doing finals games. Julius Randle's doing finals games. And Mikel Bridges is uh, doing nothing. Right. I get it. <laughs> you know, no. so it's 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 crazy how that all that. works out, man. And, you know, it's it's uh, I don't know. And can I read a tweet? So Magic Johnson. I saw this. The GOAT. Quote, unquote, Mikel Bridges traded to the Knicks. Wow. Hats off to Leon Rose and William Wesley, a.k.a. Worldwide West. With an exclamation point. This trade changes the landscape in the Eastern Conference. Now the Knicks will challenge the Celtics for first place in the East while putting pressure on the Sixers and Bucks to improve. It's the perfect breakdown. I mean, it's just exactly <laughs> he is the best. And he's right to the point. You're right. Both, yeah. No, I'm yeah. kidding. But we'll see um, what the Bucks and Sixers uh, yeah. do as well, because oh, um, you know Milwaukee was un, was not healthy last year all season. Um, they uh-huh. got to get healthy. So for them, uh, they definitely need to make a move to 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 catch up and. Um, yeah, I just hope that this is like you always said about net fans and their off season championships. I hope this is yours, and I hope failure for your franchise for the rest of eternity. Well, thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. Uh, and you know, it's gonna make this podcast fun. And you're gonna have a year where you're not gonna be good. The Nets aren't gonna be. I mean, we'll see. What whatever the Nets do over the next week or so, it's it's not looking like they're gonna try to compete. Yeah, but we'll see. They might have some young guys and maybe they surprise you and maybe they play well and maybe you get some hope and, and it's going to be more exciting because if you lose a couple of games, but you find a guy that's like awesome, you're like, OK, well, this is great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, you know? I, I'm and, excited. I'm yeah. excited on that front, Alex, because. Yeah, they have they can be pick. your guys, too. They're, they can be they're, your guys. <laughs> I can watch Noah Clowney develop. I can see Cam Thomas get more reps. I what is Cam Thomas can, thinking? What do you think he's thinking? You think I, he wants I, out? I mean, I er, I don't. And I earned so much respect for him on that net Nick game when Mikel, if you remember that game, yes, Mikel yes. was like on the side shooting three for 11 from three and not playing and caring. And Cam Thomas was like battling and trying to win and carrying the team. You saw it there. Like he, I did. Bridges was done. He was done. And Cam is going to get it's going to be the keys to him. He's going to lead the league. And then he hit Brunson. He hit Brunson or something in the, in the game. Okay, and Brunson flopped. Well, and, it was, yeah, they had to foul because of how many, they were down. How many? Right. They, they hit him a little hard. Two, or and something. they had to foul, you know, when, yeah. uh, for the Knicks fans that don't understand how it works when you're down <laughs> two with 12 seconds left. Hit Kidding. him a little hard, but in the replay it showed Brunson really did flop. But then yeah. Brunson, but then somebody got in, in Camp Thomas's face and Camp Thomas was like, Yo, get out of my face. You know yeah. what I mean? And it kind of gave you pride as a Nets fan for you. And, that was that's you know, what I love. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, show show up. some pride. Actually care yeah. about your uniform. Yeah. So so what do what you were saying before? Yeah. I can watch the development Sorry. of Noah Clowney. I can watch <laughs> I can watch Cam Thomas continue. I can see uh all the draft like they just have a direction. Now it yeah. might be they might be terrible. That probably will be really bad, and then being yep. bad isn't a bad thing anymore because they have a pick that's their own and a loaded draft in twenty twenty five. So, yeah, it's it's going to be some bad losses, but at least those losses amount to something, and it's not this rudderless, stuck in the ocean. Like, okay, is Trey Young coming? Are we getting Donovan? Like, they you can go all for eighty two, and it's gravy, like Jay Z says. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if it's if it's the fifth pick. And they yeah. don't do well in the lottery. It's the fifth pick, but it's the they have but this, direction. This is isn't cool. like the John Wall year where they tanked and they were hoping for John Wall and ended up with favors. You know what I mean? It's not like that because it's not just one year. It's like you got a bunch. You got time. Yeah. You got picks. You can trade. You can yeah. make moves around. It's a win-win we'll for see. both teams. Maybe you I get just, Cooper Flag, man. Maybe that's your guy next year, and you win the lottery. Right. And and now <laughs> and now you're it'd be you're building. And I know you got the great white of, hope, and you're, you're building <laughs> yes, to yeah. to what's coming. I'm but yeah, and, yeah. and the uh, and I'm just gonna have to sit here and suck it. But you and, know what? Uh, I, watch it for you know it, it is what it is. I'm I'm pumped. I don't care. You should be. You should be. Uh, screw the Nets. I'm pumped. I'm so happy. The Knicks have a. Li- uh, the Knicks could have won the championship this year. They, I don't know they where are we in this they year didn't. or last year. Are we, could, did, are we they, saying last year now? They could have. They, did, they didn't. But they didn't. they didn't. They but didn't. in my mind, they could have if they were healthy. And they would have they would have killed the Pacers. They may have been the one seed if they were healthy the, throughout the NBA season. They were the two seed when they, they were wouldn't have hurt the Celtics. The Celtics and had sixty four wins. The Knicks were killing it in January, man. That's yeah, a lot of time 10, left in the they season. Were, they wouldn't have been the one seed. We'll see. Who knows? We'll they never know. The, we'll never know. I don't. 
You're right. So you're right. We'll we never, will know. never know. And Boston won the title. They did. They did. And they played a bunch of injured teams. And they won the title and they got their ring. Congrats to them. Off of two Nets draft picks. You know, congrats to the Celtics. But um, on top of that, I just I'm so excited because the Knicks are going for it. They finally gave up the treasure trove of picks and said, fuck it. Let's win the championship now. And they did it when they already had a great team. They didn't do it when they were Isaiah Thomas crap teams. They went and said, we got a squad. Let's get a guy that fits perfect. Let's go put pressure on OG on and Obi to sign his deal. Let's put pressure on Hartenstein to sign his deal. You guys want to come back and win a title? Come to New York. You want to go somewhere else? You want to go to Oklahoma City? You want to go anywhere else? You want to go to Indiana? You want to do anything like that and maybe get to the second round? Go have fun with that. But if you want to win a title... Come to New York City with the Knicks, and we'll 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 get you there. And that's that's what I'm so excited as a fan. I cannot wait. My 40th birthday is in November. My wife always buys me uh, uh, Knicks tickets around my birthday, and she's like already like, "What do you want? What do you want? What do you want?" And I'm just like, I might just be like, just get me like amazing Knicks tickets. <laughs> that's it. No, no party. I don't care. Let's go. And that's just all I care about right now. I can't believe it. You got the Jets coming up. The Mets are playing well. Things are looking great in Alex's life in sports and. I'm I'm just I'm, I I can't believe that the Knicks did this. Like I just I can't believe it. Like I I you know this wasn't even a thought. We had Jake Fisher on and we said this a couple episodes ago already, and he totally took me and you, like our brains out of the Mikael Bridges sweepstakes. Well, He's like yeah. the only way it happens is if J- Jalen Brunson demands it happens. And a couple things changed as well over the last month since we had him on. So you know, in fairness to Jake, but. It's unbelievable. Like, I can't believe that this happened. And I love that the NBA changed it, that you can start making trades. You could start signing guys right away. This fake deadline of, you know, J- June 30th. And, you know, you can't do it. You know, it's just it was nonsense. I'm just so excited. The Knicks have a team. They fit. They all like each other. They love each other. You, you're, they're keeping Mitchell Robinson is one of my favorite players. You keep one of the old <laughs> OGs that have been on the Knicks from when they sucked. You know, it's, you know, RJ and quickly shout out to them. I wish they were still here, but they're not. And, you know, it's just it's I'm just so excited that the Knicks are going forward and they're a powerhouse. They're a legitimate championship contender. And I'm just so excited. Now they are. They are. Um, They definitely are. I mean, Mikel is a is a perfect piece into what they're doing. I'll be very curious to see. Um, I, And just because Mitchell Robinson went on their podcast doesn't guarantee that he's back. It does. Well, to me, it does. To me, it does. I, I, I'm not, I just, Josh I'm Hart has that. dropped hints throughout the whole season of what's going to happen here and there with Julius Randle's going to be off of the year and this guy and that. It, I, they are the runners of that franchise, or they are like in the meetings and they know what's going on. That's yeah. just my opinion. No, it, it looks like uh, all indications are based on what everybody's saying that Hardenstein's gone um, from just trying to keep all of the money uh, and everything that 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 hurts them. Not the detail of it, but that that. That we're not capologists, yeah. That he's but. um out of it. Um, yeah, and then you know, you see how the pieces fit with Randall coming back. Uh I you know, and this is all geared, and everybody has said it. Like you look at Boston, you got Tatum and Brown, Derek White. I mean, they, they got guys that can go up against them. And and if you're a Knicks team, uh, you're not asking Mikel Bridges to lead your franchise, you're asking him to uh basically, you know, revert back to what he was doing in Phoenix, maybe at a little higher level. Um you know, I, I do think he had a down year with the Nets. His scoring was up, but his shooting was really down. But the half um, year before that, when he was with the Nets, he looked like a superstar. Right. Like he could be. It was a budding superstar. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, I, and not I think even there was just exaggerated. too much on his yeah. shoulders. Yeah. Um. Clearly, he couldn't handle the pressure or, you know, the talent of being the number one option in the NBA. Fair. Fair. Uh, but, yeah. but he's not that. That's not a knock. Yeah. No, it's just it's he's he's going to a situation that is the perfect fit in the league for him where he's already in New York. He's got his best friends in the world now on the team. And right. he can fit in seamlessly and do everything, um, you know, that they'll ask for. You know, and and I, the, the person that's probably the most excited is Tom Thibodeau because Mikel Bridges hasn't missed a game in 802 years. He plays 82 games. Um, you know, get ready. Now, for if he her- gets hurt, they're going to blame Tibbs if he gets hurt. <laughs> no, I, I mean. <laughs> Even if it's a twisted ankle or something. They'll be like, oh, uh, Tibbs, you see? <laughs> I mean the way I mean honestly the way Tibbs it just it <laughs> probably will happen. <laughs> probably will. But you know what? And it, what's crazy is that people are like am I crazy to think that I forgot the reporter I saw I saw Connor Hughes uh, quote tweet him like 
you know, how does this make sense with OG? This doesn't make sense roster wise. And it's just like, who cares? Like no, we're, we're still the, the roster is not set yet. One, number one. And number two, look at what happened to the Knicks last year. The entire team got hurt. Can you imagine if they had Mikhail Bridges the turn to when OG went down? They would still be they still would have won. And you know, they they have Hartenstein and Mitch when when you know, so it's just like I don't know what's gonna happen with the back yeah. end of the roster. Like I said, they still have Jericho Sims, they're rumored to go after Goga. You know, I don't know what's happening, but what I know no. is happening, the Knicks have the roster to win an NBA championship. And as a Knicks fan, that's all you can ask for in a franchise, especially in the NBA, where that is very difficult to say. And you can say it with your chest out. The Knicks are going to win a championship this year, and you will not get laughed at and not looked at as delusional. And I am just so excited that I can have that. I'm so excited for our fans. We deserve it. And I can't wait to be on this podcast together with you, Mike, and go back and forth for the next couple of years of Knicks and Nets, especially when you have our draft picks. And let's go, man. Let's let's get it started yeah, yeah, tonight. I, I've, I've been in that situation. <laughs> I mean, when the Nets had the stars and they, they, it's a it's a good feeling when you go to sleep and you go get me to the playoffs let's see what happens um, yeah and i'm not even just looking forward to the playoffs i'm looking forward to every game i just want to i want to soak all of this in i'm not gonna let the anxieties of other people get in my head and say well they have to win a championship it's championship bus let's fast forward to the playoffs like no i'm going to enjoy the knicks kicking the crap out of the memphis grizzlies in november i'm going to enjoy the knicks kicking the crap out of the pacers and getting revenge for last year i'm going to enjoy the knicks kicking the crap out of the nets even if they're tanking i'm going to enjoy every second of those games in the regular season and every second of the regular and every second of the playoffs i'm going to enjoy every little moment of this cuz it has been since the mellow year is when I thought the Knicks won a championship. And that was also like, eh, but there's LeBron there. You know, no, no, it's been since the 90s, since the Knicks. You looked at this team and said, I'm going to win a championship this year. It legitimately can happen. I don't care if Michael Jordan's there. We can beat him. You know, there was one or two years in there. I know it was Michael Jordan, et cetera, et cetera. That's the difference. There's no Michael Jordan. LeBron is 100 years old. Jokic is in the West. Giannis, I get it. I get it. He's in the East, but he's beatable. You know what I mean? The Celtics, this, they're the champions, but they're beatable. This is just crazy. And I know the offseason hasn't really kicked off yet. We don't know what other teams are going to do. We don't know if Philly is going to get Paul George. But even if they get Paul George, I'm not afraid of Philly. I'm not afraid of anybody as a Knicks fan. I'm just so excited. And I'm sorry I'm ranting, but I just I have to get all that out. I'm just like, I'm so hyped up. It's 640 in the morning. This is the only time we can record this podcast. And I'm uh, I'm on a half a cup of coffee. And I'm just so excited. I slept about three hours last night. And Mike, God bless the Nets for, for giving the Knicks to Mikael Bridges. And maybe we look back at this. Maybe we look back at this and saying this was the best moment for both franchises. Like or, the Porzingis trade for the Mavericks. You know, I know the Knicks won the trade, but you know what? The, the Mavs were able to flip Porzingis and get picks back and, you know, make their moves. And they got to the finals. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of a lot of teams where there's trades that just benefit both teams. And maybe this is one of them, you know, but I hope it doesn't. You know, I hope but it does. We'll I hope it I hope it doesn't either. And I hope that Mikel Bridges goes to New York and fails and is a complete failure right. and they right. don't win and that the Nets reap the benefits of it. So uh, am I optimistic early on that that will happen? Absolutely not. And I'm terrified of it. But I hope that you are completely wrong and there is no guarantee that because Mikel Bridges um, got lunch with Jalen Brunson when they went to play Syracuse at the Carrier Dome on a Saturday in 2018, <laughs> that doesn't guarantee that they're going to come in there and it's an automatic W. I get your excitement. You should be. You have every right to be. You have a team that is a title contender, uh, and I, I hope, um, I hope it's a complete and utter failure. Just that, like you were rooting for KD, Kyrie, and Harden to not work, I'm rooting the same way for your team with your group to not help. And you know, now, now the Nets do have the Nick draft picks, and yet yeah, you're right about the kid in 2031 and 2029. But that's the way it works with these trades. That's the same thing that people were saying with all of these that have gone on to happen. It's how teams rebuild, and at least for the Nets, it doesn't mean that there is success in the future. It doesn't mean that, but it does mean that there is at least the opportunity for success and not just middling in the middle. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll end with this, Alex. I, I, am, I, I cannot tell you how badly I am rooting for this to fail. And, um, <laughs> you know, for so many different reasons. Um, and I'll have to, you know, got to suck it up. And, and 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 take it. And I was wrong. You know, I said the Nets would never deal them. Uh, I was wrong. I was wrong too. Me too. I, 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 you know, and and it's not it's not like um there's this track. Everybody everybody was right when they said the friendship there was so strong 
that it would it would lean Leon Rose to go all in and give up the most assets that he's ever given up, clearly, um, to make that trade. Because the Nets, the Nets have the four picks. They got the right to swap it in 2028, which you would assume. So you would assume that there would be a swap because the Knicks should be better. Again, that yeah. but that's in four years, so you never know, I guess. Um, I guess. and then that Bucks pick, which is top four protected. So they're gonna have the pick. It's it's dude, I, I I don't even know what else to say. What a night for New York sports last night, though. I mean, you it know was bu- it was busy, man. Right when that I, I swear to God, the ball literally was going over the wall. Now <laughs> on my now it wasn't in real time because you're at the game, that's what 60 seconds later. But on right. my phone, this home this grand slam is in like, oh, Bader looks like he's got a beat on it. And that's like, no, it doesn't. Ball goes over the wall and the thing popped up. And I I, I had to read it like seven times. To like process what? it. <laughs> and then and then in my head, I was just like, my night is fucked. That was the second I said, I'm fucked. Oh, I had to delete Twitter God. last night because I was like, I'm never gonna go to sleep. I fell asleep at 140. I just like I was wired. That's crazy. And you know what? The Knicks, so Woj last night tweeted, the Knicks are still determined to keep OG on an OB in free agency, but the ability to resign center Isaiah Hartenstein becomes more difficult now. The Knicks are loading up on wings to match up with the NBA champion, Boston Celtics. So, you know, usually when Woj says something, it means the world, but you know what? Uh, Dan Hurley's not a Laker, so maybe that doesn't really hold as much weight well, anymore. He never said he was going there. He said they were, t- he never said it. He well, just said they were usually when he says when he, he didn't says, say he's signed. Yeah, that's true. But usually when it. he says like there's action towards, you know, this guy going this place, it's usually it's done. You know what I mean? Like usually with Wolge, when he mentions something, it's it's done. But who knows? What a terrible hire by the Lakers, by the way, for JJ yeah. Reddick. But we don't have to talk about that now. But what's well, like bad, bad weather fans. Them. Episode 225. <laughs> I hope I said that right at the beginning of the title. Um, who knows? Don't forget YouTube. Watch us. We've had some fun interviews. Um, we've got some more coming. Obviously, we weren't expecting to have this type of content in the middle of the week, but it happened. Mikel Bridges traded to the New York Knicks. Nets get back a ton of draft picks from the Knicks unprotected four unprotected one pick swap in the Bucks 2025 first round draft pick. And then the Nets make a second deal with Houston, getting their draft picks back in 2025. Um, and check out, uh, see online the full 15 that they have. Um, and we'll, we'll, um, we'll see what happens after we hit stop on this podcast because the draft is tonight. And you would anticipate, I think, more on the Nets side than the Knicks. Uh, the Nets making a little trade here or there. I think the Knicks have some serious scope planning to figure out. Well, the Nets are just trying to acquire, you know, young assets and draft picks and bad contracts to take on. All right, yeah. Alex. Different trajectories. You're yep. going up, you're going down. But. Well, we're going up though. We're the nets. The nets are going down, but the franchise as a whole now has the is going up. They're Fine. not you, flatlining. They bottomed took- out, and now they're going up. They were they were just they were. I I will I will push back on that for the rest of my fucking life. <laughs> yes, their 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 roster near isn't nearly as good. Obviously, they dealt their best player, or second best player, but. Yep. They have a trajectory now where they didn't have before 24 hours ago, but that shouldn't take away any of your excitement. You have every right to feel that way. You have a team that can contend for a championship. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but the Nets did at very least give themselves a trajectory of a franchise. And it's, you know, hopefully James Dolan and the, the dipshits in your background just fuck up somehow. You know what? The fine. The Nets took the we'll take two steps back. I mean, one step back to take two steps forward. And the Knicks said, We are going forward. <laughs> you know, Agreed. so Agreed. So that's that's really what it is. And Agreed. you know, I'm I'm excited. So all right, bad weather fans. Uh we'll see you next week when you know Cam Thomas is traded for um for the Knicks. Yeah. Jericho Sims. See you. <laughs>